Hey everyone, today I'm going to be demonstrating how to do the full Persian 6-in-1 chainmail weave. I made a video showing this pattern about a year ago and I got a lot of great comments on things that I could have done differently in the video, so I wanted to take a second shot at it and hopefully make it a bit easier to follow. Before we get going, here's a few examples of the pattern we're going to do. It's one of my favorite patterns for any kind of chain jewelry. Um, I love it for necklaces or bracelets or wallet chains, anything like that. Um, I have a few samples here to show you. This is the size of ring that we're going to be using today. I'm going to be using aluminum 5 16 of an inch 16 gauge rings. Here's an example of a chain with 5 16 of an inch 18 gauge rings. You can see it's a bit looser, it does still work, but definitely uh, a larger gauge will give you a, a better result. Um, these examples here, these three, are quarter of an inch, uh, 18 gauge wire. They're a nice tight chain as well. Here's a copper bracelet, a few pendants, or if you're a millennial, fidget toys. Um, here is a, another example of a pendant. This is a Celtic cross. It's a really cool thing you can do with this pattern. A nice pendant you can make. Here's an example of a, another chain. These are both made out of uh, 20 gauge, 1 8 of an inch rings. A nice, nice pattern, uh, especially when you use a, a small size ring like this. So the rings that I'm going to be using for this demonstration are 5 16 of an inch, 16 gauge bright aluminum and anodized aluminum. And I'm hoping that by having the two different colors here, it'll make the tutorial a bit easier to follow. I'm going to start off by closing four rings and I'm going to be closing all gold rings for this demonstration. So all the rings that I'm going to be closing will be the gold ones and they're going to form the center of the chain. Now I'm going to open a ring here and I'm going to put the four closed rings on it and close it. So it's just like the start of a European four to one chain. However, then I'm going to add a second ring in the same position as the ring that I just added going through the four gold rings. So what I'm doing essentially is just creating a piece of two by two by two chain. Now to prepare for the next step, I'm just going to open a ring up in advance so that I can kind of demonstrate as I put it together. Now, I'm going to lay this section of chain out basically the same way you would if you were starting again the European 4 to 1 pattern. However, then I'm going to pick it up and do something a bit different. I'm essentially going to push the rings in position like this, and then I'm going to come in with my new ring. I'm going to put it in between these other two silver rings, not going through them, but just going in the middle of the two of them, and then going through all four gold rings, pinning them in the position that I'm holding them right now. So let's go ahead and do that, and hopefully this sort of makes sense to you. This is one of those uh, types of patterns that really involves creating a bit of muscle memory, uh, learning the pattern and, and how it's done. And once you've done it a few times, you'll get the hang of it, you'll know how the rings are going to respond when you try to start weaving them together, how you need to move them, that sort of thing. So I've got it through three rings right now. I've got it through the three gold rings here on the bottom left. It's coming up through the, the middle of the two silver rings, but not going through either of them. And now I'm just going to have to get it through this other gold ring as well, while not losing any of the other ones. So you can see what I did there. Now when I pull on this, it's going to hold everything nicely in place. Um, so the two rings, these two gold rings here, are being pulled in the middle of these two gold rings on this side. And the ring I just added is coming up between the middle two silver rings. So I'm going to go ahead and close this now. And I'm going to, I'm going to add another silver ring in the exact same way. So it'll be a bit easier to see what I'm doing this time now that there's our first ring holding it in place. I'm going to go between these two silver rings, through all four gold rings, and back between these two silver rings on the other side. 
and then I'm going to close it. Okay, so that's our uh, full Persian six in one chain started. Now to add to it, we're gonna put two more silver rings on, and this time they're just gonna go through, or sorry, two more gold rings on through the silver rings we added in the last step. It doesn't matter how you add them on as long as they get in place. Now let's take a look at this chain and you can start to visualize how the pattern actually forms. So as you can see, these are free to move around the rings we just added, these gold rings. They can move from side to side. They can move in between the gold rings from the previous step. What we wanna do is get one on each side and you can see how that pattern is sort of creating an overlap of rings as we move this way. If we flip this chain over 90 degrees, you'll see that there's also an overlap forming with the silver rings in this direction. So it's basically two opposite directions of overlap and it's a really cool pattern because there's a nice symmetry between the sides for example, if you flip it around, you can see that now the, the silver rings are basically symmetrical with the gold rings in this configuration. So we're gonna continue adding to it now. Open another silver ring here. We're gonna carefully, while keeping these gold rings on their respective sides of their other gold ring friends, come through splitting those silver rings apart and going through all four gold rings and then closing it up. So again, we'll add two more gold rings now to those silver rings. take another silver and put it through, pinning them in place. Once again, we're gonna come down through these two, get the first one, get the middle two, then get the outside one. All right, I'm gonna show you a, a bit of a speed weaving technique to make this pattern move a bit quicker and I'll show this again at the end of the video. I'm gonna actually demonstrate the process of making a quick bracelet. Close two gold rings, take an open silver ring, put the two gold rings on it, and then put it in place and close it. And that just saves time. Uh, it makes things move a little quicker because you're not having to open and close the gold rings. You just close them, you can close a bunch of of them at once and then simply sit there and weave your chain together. So we've created a small piece of chain here and the next thing I wanna talk about is how to actually join two pieces of chain together. Now this is an important skill, especially if you're making a continuous bracelet like this. This is one of my favorite projects to make um, and it's really popular right now with this chunky silver jewelry. Uh, it's kind of in fashion, so it's important to have an understanding of how to actually connect two ends of chain. Now, what we need to do is make sure that the two pieces of chain are running in the same direction when we're looking down at them. So if you look at the gold rings in the center of the chain, they kind of form an overlapping pattern. Say my pliers here are two rings, like these two rings here, you can see that they are coming towards each other this way and then the next set of rings uh, overlap like that and it kind of moves forward like so. We wanna make sure that we're seeing that same direction of overlap on both pieces of chain. For example, if this was rotated 90 degrees, you can see that now the vertical rings as we're looking down on them, the gold on this side and silver on this side are overlapping towards each other. We're not gonna be able to join that up so what we're gonna do is make sure that they're facing each other the way they're supposed to be. Next, I'm gonna open up these two gold rings and put them through these two silver rings, but in between these two gold rings. So they're gonna go 
down through the silver rings, splitting the gold rings. So that's one, and now we're gonna do the same with the other gold ring here. All right, so the next thing we need to do is add two silver rings to finish the completion of attaching these two ends of chain. So I'm gonna open a silver ring here, and this ring needs to go down between these two silver rings through all four of these gold rings and then up through these two gold rings here but coming on the outside of these two silver rings if that makes sense so I'm gonna do this as best I can um, I'm gonna have to rotate the chain a bit while I'm doing it so I'm through all four four gold rings here between the silver rings. Now I simply bring it up through here. And because this is a pretty tight weave, closing this ring is a bit of a challenge. It kind of involves closing it a little bit, pulling it through past the last ring, closing it a bit more, and you can see there's still a pretty significant amount of gap between the two ends. So you kind of have to work it a little bit to get it closed. And unfortunately, I rotated the chain quite a bit during that process, but here's the ring that we just added. We're going to add one more silver ring to finish off the pattern, and this one's going to be very tight as well, so I'm going to probably have to rotate the chain a bit as I'm working on it. Coming in through here, you can see I'm not going through the two silver rings that I need to be, so I'm gonna back it up, come out between them, identical to the one we just put through, and then go through these last two gold rings here. And this one is gonna be even tighter than the last. You can see it wants to come up in its incorrect place because of the curve of the ring being open. So I kind of have to reach in with my pliers here and pull it through as you close it. So that's just something that takes a bit of practice. Take your time with it, be patient. When you get it, you'll see that the two pieces of chain are perfectly joined. I couldn't even tell you which links we just added because they all look like they're doing what they're supposed to. The last thing that I wanna talk about is just that speed weaving technique that I mentioned earlier. I just wanna show you that in a bit more detail and what it actually looks like when you get going. So I'm gonna start off by closing a bunch of rings and like I said before, I'm gonna be closing all, this, all gold rings and I'm gonna open a bunch of rings as well. I'm gonna open all silver rings. For this technique, we're gonna need equal parts, opened and closed rings. So I like to count them out as I go. I usually count 10 closed rings, then open 10, then close 10, then open 10 again. That way I ensure I have equal parts at the end of the day. Okay, so I have a bunch of closed and open rings here, and now I'm gonna do the speed weaving technique where you take one open ring, put two closed rings on it, and weave the rings on as you go. And then, once that's done, you double it up, adding another identical silver ring to the ring you just added. This pattern allows you to move really quick. It's uh, pretty much essential to, to use a speed weaving technique like this if you intend to make anything of any length. Otherwise, it's super time consuming. All right, so you can see how much that speeds up the process. Um, now, in the interest of being detail oriented, I'm gonna show you one more time the process involved in connecting 
the ends of the chain because I know that's a pretty challenging step for people. So what I'm gonna do to start off these last two gold pieces here, open them up and put them through these silver pieces on the inside of those two gold pieces so they're continuing the pattern of overlap. Flip it over here so it's a bit easier to get at this next one. I'm gonna open it up that way so it easily scoops through and does what it needs to do. And now I'm gonna add the last two silver pieces that will hold this all together. This is pretty tight, so it's gonna be a little bit challenging adding these last pieces. I'm gonna come through here, flip it over, and manipulate the rings to get everything in place. I really hope this video clarified things for you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.